Welcome to the UK OCR Community Podcast, presented by Obstacle Racing Media. Each episode, we'll be talking to race directors, elite runners, weekend warriors, and frankly, anyone else from the UK OCR scene that will talk to us. Here is your host, Alan, aka Muddy Duck. Anywhere in Chicken South. The bloody scene is bloody sad. The bloody news is bloody bad. This show is sponsored by the Farmyard Jam, the ultimate test of endurance. 24 hours of running and challenges that even the best fail at. Can you last the distance? Only one person did last year. Click the link in description to sign up and use code UKOCR for a 10% discount. Wayne Grumpy King! Probably the most well-known volunteer out there there is. Welcome to the UK OCR podcast. How are you? Not bad, you? I'm absolutely brilliant, mate. I was speaking to Ian the other day and I said to him, we need some, we need someone on podcast we haven't had on for a while. Who do we really know? And he went, I don't know. And I just like, we did IROX at the weekend, saw your IROX, and I went, we haven't had Grumpy on. Why, why, why haven't we had Grumpy on podcast? We have had Grumpy on. But it was a while ago. We did the one with uh, Tamar about the uh, Belgium... <laughs> yeah, about the Belgian one, but we, we haven't had you, we haven't found out about you and stuff like that. We we discussed Belgium that's no longer the Belgium Okra that's gone under and everything else, what went wrong. And I, I'm gonna blame you and Tamar actually for the podcast for saying that, and that's why they've gone under and everything. I'm only joking, mate. You know, I am <laughs> dude, they went under before we had anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly did. And um, so I thought when I when we saw I said I said to you, and I said, I've got to get grumpy, and I said I know we've had him on, but we haven't actually had him on. We haven't, we haven't done an interview. We haven't found out about him. You know, everyone just knows you and just expects to see you everywhere. And I thought, let's get you on. So here you are. Thanks for joining me. It's all right, dude. Anytime. So, um, I'm going to jump straight in because I want to know, you've been around probably as long as I have in the OCR scene. When, when did you start on the OCR scene? First race was Manchester Stadium Spartan Super, which I did with a friend of mine called Nicholas Gibson. He then took me to Tough Mudder. Um, and then I've been, I then found out that you get free races if you volunteered, <laughs> which, bear in mind, the cost of some races was a bonus and a half. Um, so then I started volunteering. I'm on what, 30 Tough Mudders in uh, five years, I think. Yeah. It seems like you've been on for much longer than five years, on the scene for much longer than five years. Where did, we, was, where did we meet? Ram Run? It would either have been Ram Run or Suffering. Did I got you do a suffering? Ram Run. I was at Suffering, yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did volunteer more Suffering than I ran it. Um, I was lucky enough to get one of the, um, one of the last legends because they went sideways afterwards yeah um i was at ram run i've done his endurance one which is the three distances over the weekends um can't remember where else we've seen it did you do any of the zeus's yeah we didn't do zeus um reaper i think we did reaper reaper, reaper. Spent some time at reaper yeah volunteer um, reaper and then run that as well um one of the only idiots i know of that went to uh windsor spartan and then drove all the way up to do the last ever Reaper night race. Then drove back that, the next yes. day to do the uh, rest of the trifecta for Spartan. I, I remember that. That was the same weekend as a nuclear race, if I remember rightly. Because I did the nuclear blast and blackout on the Saturday. Or was it blast and blackout? Yes, the blast and blackout. That's the two-hour race. Yeah. I did them on the Saturday and then went down to... Spartan on the Sunday and saw you um, at Spartan, but you travelled up in the meantime to come back to Reaper. Um, you must put some miles on your car. Uh, I've had two since I've started this. Right. Um, the car I've had now, actually, no, the car I've had now, I've had for five years. So that one's done 120 odd thousand. Um, it was <laughs> on 30 when I first got it. And so, yeah, I do slightly more. I hope the insurance company's not listening, but I do slightly more than the 10,000 I tell them. 
<laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you a story about these shows. I don't know if I'm, readers know this, but my friend um, at work, he's got a new car. He just bought a, a, a newish car. And he said to me, how many miles do you put down a year? And I put, well, I put 5,000 down as commuting. Because that, that's all I put down, commuting 5,000. And, I, you know, I, I walk to work half the time. So it's probably about right commuting. And he said, right, okay, so he put it in. And he, his insurance came out at like £900. And he was like, oh, 900 quid, that's quite a lot, that. Like, so he thought, well, I'll just see how much it is for 10,000 miles. And he put it for 10,000 miles and he brought it down by 20 quid. So he put 15,000 in it and he brought it down by 100 quid. He's ended up putting nearly 35,000 miles in it. And it's like, I think he's paying 600 quid now. Three. So I always thought it was the opposite way around. But it's 300 quid cheaper for more miles. I don't get that. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that because I only ever tell him I do 10,000 social, domestic and, play, and commute. Yeah. So my car's covered what, for whatever reason I drive it for. Um, yeah. And it's, I pay what, well, then again, I've got a little car, so I pay about 350 odd quid at the moment. Yeah. I think, well, I, I drive a four before and mine's four and a half hundred, I think, um, for my BMW four before. So that's, give it, that's, hey, that, did that sound a little bit posh? That was like, I've got a BMW four BMW. before. BMW. <laughs> As you always got the funny little things on the under the steering wheel, you know, that you're supposed to flick to go left and right. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I've never used it. You never BMW. Used to, yeah. <laughs> BMW drivers don't use it. That's the reason why I got one. It's got that yeah, no. funny stick that you don't have to use. <laughs> yeah, everything your job's useless. Just remember there's some guy at BMW that puts indicators on his on the cars. <laughs> Um, I've got to test my BMW on um, off road, so that's that's overload on this year because it's not been off road yet. So um, that'll be a proper test for it. Oh, that's it. Time to question you. What's with the change of date for overload? Um, well, we we just gone. August was getting a little bit. I don't know. August was becoming so difficult with the land, and we we had an option to fetch it forward to May, um, which gave us a, a a slightly better window. And we've got, we can have a two-week window in May. So that was the whole plan, fetch it forward to May. Because originally we were going to do two dates. I'll be honest and say we were going to do May and August. Um, no, we just we just brought it through to May. And we're going to just stick with May now. It's quite easy for both me and Jamie to get time off work in May. Much easier than it is in August. Um, school holidays and all of that lot. And it also, I think it's probably a little bit safer. And I mean this in the nicest possible way, that whenever we put overload on in August... We had the best weather going, which is people think it's great, but from a race director's point of view, it's a logistical nightmare. You know, it's you constantly rain, uh, sun is more risky than the a rain. little bit of cold and rain, um, you know, for dehydration and that. So, yeah, it, it just made a lot of sense to us just to bring it forward. Um, and, and it's working for us. I'm, it's, it is what it is. We haven't lost runners. Um, no more than what we would have expected. So, um, and the farmyard jam going ahead and things like that. So, which is good. Which is good. Um, let's get back to you though. It's not about me. It's not about you questioning me. <laughs> <laughs> Quick plug there. Delete that, everyone, if you've listened to that. <laughs> so you said you got you heard about um, volunteering. So, which was the first volunteer one you went to do? Tough mother. Where at? Can you remember? Off the top of my head, no. Then again, I can't remember where I was last year, dude. <laughs> um, a lot of people go to you like, oh, I remember you. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I can't remember doing that one. No, no. Yeah, you, um, you quickly but... became a, a face, though, didn't you? And I, uh, I mean, I, I remember seeing it so many obstacles. And um, I'm, not, I guess... I'm going to come to you in a minute and ask you why they're called grumpy, because I've never seen you really with a grumpy face on. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. But I remember I've got... A was it Airfield Anarchy I went to, or was it Rough Rough Runner? In it might have been Rough Runner, the one that's um, just near Newark. And I came through some woods, and you was an obstacle. And I wasn't expecting an obstacle. Never mind your smiley face there. And it was like, and I was racing. I was like, I think I was. It was one of them races that I'd actually gone to race. And you're there, and all of a sudden I just stop, and I'm like. I'm giving you hugs and I'm thinking like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I get that from quite a few people. Uh, like some of the solos, if I'm not at a race, want to know why 
it's like, well, I can't guarantee I'll be everywhere because you get a clash and you have to work out which one you're going to have more fun at. Um, you try and go to the same one. So this year I'm going to miss out a uh, nuclear rush, which will be the first time in I think six years that I've missed. Wow. Because it's the same weekend as the first uh, Spartan Trifecta right. weekend. Um, and then other things like Wolf move from the first weekend of the of their month to like the last or the middle, which plays havoc when you've got like that weekend. I know those races are on. I can do this. That weekend is other races. And then they, everyone moves around and you're like, hang on a minute, this is going to get confusing. And so I'll miss out on some because I can't handle I can't split myself into two, unfortunately. No. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't really know. But yeah, it helps that I'm loud. Like you'll usually hear me before you see me. Yeah. Um, but then once you once you start going and people get used to you, you can get away with a lot more. So I can be a little bit risky in the bits and pieces that I say to certain people. And others will look at you and go, you can't say that. It's like, luckily, I know them. I'm fine. <laughs> but others will be like, so uh, I remember doing a Tough Mudder where I bopped a woman's nose. So I literally just pointed to her chest. She looked down and bopped her nose and she had a ballistic fit. Oh, Literally like, it's like I had a member of staff come up and say, did you? And I'm like, yes, I know. I've already apologized countless times. It's like I'm staying away from her. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just chalk and cheese, really. Yeah, yeah. What 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 all gave you the nickname Grumpy though? Grumpy came about when I worked in hospitality. Right. Um, I did that for twenty plus years, and at two o'clock in the morning, my staff would be like, "Can we go home?" And I'll be like, "No, we've still got stuff to do." And if you hadn't faffed around, we'd have been done by now. It's like, God, I hate Grumpy Wayne. I much prefer Party Wayne. It's like Party Wayne's not coming out until Grumpy Wayne is sorted, <laughs> and. So then they gave me, they got me a big mug with Grumpy on it. I've got a Grumpy uh, stuffed toy. And after that, it stuck. So when I started racing and they said, what nickname do you want on the back of your T-shirt? That's what came up. So that's what stuck. And the thing is, everyone goes, why don't they call you Grumpy? And I'm like, well, that's the oxymoron. Yeah, it's an oxymoron. Everything but, I am everything but Grumpy when I'm bowling. Unless someone's like, a bit outrageous in their behaviour. I am probably one of the funniest people out on the course, trying to have a laugh and a giggle and everything. But if you're if you've got a runner that's pushing his luck, he'll find out that I can be grumpy. Yeah, yeah. And, and now you're moving to a bit of high rocks volunteering and and that. You know, are you away every fifty two weeks a year? Are you actually volunteering fifty two weeks a year? No, um, I've got nothing in February at the moment. First thing I think I've got in March, actually I've got two things in March. I've got the uh, event before the awards dinner. Yeah, the 3K. And I think I'm going to Tartan Warrior as well. I've just got to work out logistics for that because it's in the middle of nowhere and there's no hotels or B&Bs nearby. You can, I'm sure that Gavin will just let you keep in, put an hammock up in between the rig in the um, in the barn and away you go <laughs> dude it's scotland it'll be cold i don't sleep outside when it's cold <laughs> not a bit you know he's got, he's, got, he's got a nice farmhouse i'm sure you can keep down in there um yeah but it's, it's not just me though is it if he does it for me he's got to do it for everybody yeah and so i don't impose on so some events i could probably say can i crash in the like the marquee or whatever they probably say yes but then you realise that if I, they let me do it, they've got to let others do it, and then it just gets a bit awkward or outrageous. So, yeah, no, trying to sort out um, either a hotel or Airbnb because it's the uh, time warriors over two days. Did you so ever trying... volunteer at Tough Guy? I didn't know. I ran the right. last ever. <laughs> the last ever or the actual last ever or the last ever oh, before I the remember, last ever. I, I ran the one they advertised as the last ever when we I all got, got the big Mickey Mouse I got the big Mickey Mouse white plaque um, yeah. when they when they overheard some of Sir Anoid, he dug out some of the old style uh, brass ones and said well you can have one of those Yeah. Um, and then what was it next year all of a sudden he's doing another one it's like hang on a minute you can't 
and everyone went on about, well, he didn't say it's the last ever, and a million and one people all posted up the adverts going, last ever. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, no, I didn't volunteer tough guy, but I have run it. I think I've run it twice. Okay. That's cool. Was it, was it when out of all the, let's go, let's talk about the volunteering side. So, all the volunteering, which, which one um, has been your, is the most enjoyable experience? So, start to finish, no matter what, you know, just what was, what's the, which one do you like? Or which one would you go back to year after year if they'd ever did it? Uh, I can't because it'll leave a bad taste in people's mouths, but suffering. Right. I yeah. love the suffering because you could beast the runners before they did your obstacle. And so you could make them do, well, if it was cold, you make them do something so you could check on the hypothermia. So head, shoulders, knees and toes or sing a song. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so suffering would be first. Reaper yeah. would, Reaper and Zeus would then be tight, tied for second and third because I thoroughly enjoyed Reaper. That was a good laugh. And Zeus, Gavin, Gavin was brilliant at setting up unusual obstacles and then giving them names that were almost risky. So like <laughs> an obstacle like Camel Toe, which when he explained it, you're like, dude, that's going to get you shot. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, very risky. When you was, when you was at Suffering... So I, I did. I was a legend at suffering as well, um, and that, and I, I did it a few times. And I always wondered when they came out beforehand, um, and you know, you're you're volunteering, you're there in the volunteer tent, and they're giving you directions. Did they tell you what you had to do to people, or was it just really left to you as the reapers just to do whatever you wanted? It was down to us, right? It was literally like as long as it's not uh, sexist racist or insulting you can do whatever you like because i remember one bloke used to make people crawl through stinging nettles no so he'd be when they did um his obstacles literally just before the switchbacks where they had the four foot inclined yep. walls you had to carry a sandbag over yeah he was at the top of that and there was a stinging nettle patch at the top and he was like on your bellies and crawl through that and like uh, dude, you've got. I've got two words for you, and you're not going to like either of them. <laughs> it's like you've got no choice. It's like, actually, I do. Um, so then you finish that and go in and see Drew, and Drew will be like, "Yeah, but I love him because that's what we get every time that everyone comes back." Yeah. <laughs> so it was. You could do whatever you like. So I had people doing uh, duck walks through water to go under an equine jump. Um, yeah. I know some of the others after water obstacles, had them doing either head, shoulders, knees and toes to see how they were doing hypothermic-wise. Um, we've had them doing a conga, all sorts of things. Literally, we could get almost get away with murder. I, I, I loved it, man. I, I, I've got to admit, I, I had a love-hate relationship with suffering. Um, the first time I went, I was, I was a fairly decent runner. You know, I was up there at most races. And I think I was, I'm going to say I was, I was in the top 10 at this particular race and I was, I'd started off quite slow, and there was a, there was a section before you dropped into that little quarry where there's a water and they built a cargo net that you went over the cargo net and and that. So about I'm about two mile in before you got to the switchbacks, and you ran along the side of this hedge, and there was a reaper there, and I think it was a I can't remember what obstacle it was, so I couldn't tell you what obstacle was there. But as you got to it, um, I caught the guys up in front. And he shouted to the guys in front, I want to say five burpees. And then I rocked up and I got 10 burpees. Yeah. And then five guys behind me got five burpees again. And I was like, I was fuming. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm racing this. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just give them a head start. And then behind me, you give them a chance to catch up. And I'm like, what, what's... And I didn't get it. I, I got it when I went back for the second one and became a legend that it's not a race. It's a... It's a challenge. It's a challenge. It is a, just yeah. basically a challenge. And the bit that cracks me up is everyone used to moan about their distances. But if you actually read their bits, it always says distance no less than. Yeah. So you were never sure your distance. You were always over. So the last legend status I earned was the 10 miles was 17. Mm -hmm. The 10K was 15. And the 5K was 9. Yeah. And... Everyone's like, oh, but but it's like it says on it, distance no less than. 
that that's the that was the last one I think I ran. Um, and I went across the line with Sam. Oh, I can't remember his surname now. Sam used to be a really good runner, and it won Reaper several times. It won. Sorry, it won suffering several times, and he got injured on the Saturday. So we'd we'd run the five k, and then on the ten k got injured. So I ran with him for the last sort of half of the ten k, um, and I I forsake with my position. And then on the Sunday I got there, and he was determined he was going to run Sunday, even though he couldn't run. And we just went round together, and we did a lot of plodding and a lot of shouting and screaming every time a reaper made him bend over because he just couldn't bend. His leg was just straight, but he wasn't going to give up and. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing um, effort by him. And yeah, there's a great picture out there of us in black and white of us crossing the finish line. And I, we weren't the last, but we we definitely weren't in the top top 200 of that race. Um, but yeah, I absolutely, absolutely love that. When you, all the, the races you've been to, which one gives you the best swag as a volunteer? It's going to have to be nuclear. Because nuclear will give you a race and a dry rope or a kit bricks and yeah. or 75 quid to spend in their shop. Which, bearing in mind that the race, what well, nuclear races is what anything up to 100 quid, yeah, yeah, the, I think Rush is 100 quid, isn't it? A dry robe is a, a bog standard dry robe is 130 quid, yeah. So they give out the best. Um, going on to the other side. So I've done an Athex competition where they gave out um, Adidas trainers. Oh, wow. So I've got a pair of trainers from doing that. Um, they're trying to sort out what, they can, what they're can, what offering this year, but at the moment they haven't got a sponsor, so they're a bit... Um, but most places you'll get a race, something to eat, something to drink, um, yeah. and that's the bit that cracks me up when they sell without volunteers. You haven't got a race, but then all you get is literally some people will complain because all you get is the race code. And it's like, well, you chose to volunteer. So I get more from the helping others and being out of course than I get than I do with like getting codes and everything else like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And High Rocks, I think they they give you a good deal, don't they? High Rocks give you trainers and shirts and things like that. If you're a head judge, yeah, you get a jacket, t shirt, leggings, trainers. If you're a volunteer judge, which is what most of the people on wall balls, lunges, and all that lot are, you get a T-shirt, um, you get a race code, and you get fed. Cool. Um, the downside to it is, is if you do two days, you don't get two race codes. You get a 60-quid merch voucher, which is all right if you're into sportswear, but no. I'm not. No. So I invariably end up doing what I do with most of my like codes and everything is that I just sell it on at half price. Right. Okay. So you're the man to come to if we ever want race codes is come to come to Grumpy and we get half price codes. Uh if you want high rocks, Athex and that sort of thing, yeah, you'll get half price codes from you'll basically I sell my code for half the ticket price. Right. Um races I invariably end up using most of mine because obviously if you're so Spartan if you race you get a code. But then if you want trifecta, you've got a run as well, which means that you have to get a 60% code rather than a full day code. With It's great using that at Spartan and Nuclear and some of the really big racers, but some of the smaller racers, and we've seen this happen over the years, you know, you can potentially volunteer, take a code, and the following year the race doesn't happen. It goes under a, for whatever reason and, and that. You, you've lost your code and you've lost your money and that. Do you... Would you prefer to see racers actually offer a same day race? So uh, you know, uh, so we'll just take the the race at Sharp Main, for instance. So there, they you you can run the volunteer and do the volunteer shift, and then there's a special wave where the volunteers run afterwards. Would you like to see that small event, or are you happy to to take the gamble? It's a risk you take, even with the big one. So if Spartan hadn't bought out Tough Mudder, yeah. All your spot, all your tough mother codes would have been useless because without them being there, so you take that risk anyway. But yeah, uh, Rocket Race Reaper Zeus all used to do a martial wave. So once the race was finished, you were given the opportunity to go around the course, but you understood that there was no marshals out on the course. 
Yeah. So you were told to like run in groups or try and stay together as much as possible. Yeah. And I like that. I, I've got something I don't want to marshal, and I I prefer that to you know to marshal and then r- run your run a race afterwards, <coughs> um, same day. Not so much because I'm trying to lose my cold, but because I think it's if you don't, you're then going back the following year and you've got all the petrol costs and everything else, and it just seems a little bit. Let's get it all done in one day. I like it. The downside to not running the same day means that if you go back the next year, you can't volunteer because yes. you're running. Whereas if you volunteer and then run next year, if you want to do it again, uh, I know a certain race where I'm volunteering and then running afterwards so I can finish off getting my overload. <laughs> Um, which means that you're there to, to to help keep the race going rather than you go back next year and you're volunteer you're running rather than volunteering. Yeah, yeah. I get that. And that's the way you know, that's what I'm saying, it's the way it could be. Out out of all the races you've done, who gives you the best food or the best pack up? Uh let's see. High Rocks give you uh fuel hub, which is protein rich food. Um I'd like to say nuts but they dropped back on their package. So you used to be able to get breakfast with nuts and then a lunch, and now they don't do anything. So oh, wow. Um, Spartan have changed from the Greg's Baguette to uh, Urban Eat Sandwiches. Same with Tough Butter. Um, so, yeah, it depends what you're looking for when you get there. So uh, Nuclear give you half a pizza. Total Warrior give you a voucher that you can use in the village to get something to eat afterwards. Um, so, unfortunately, it all depends on what you're expecting. Me, yeah. anything, I don't mind. A ham right. baguette and packet crisps and a chocolate bar will do me. <laughs> it's great that some of these races, I mean, like, to High Rocks, I mean, they're sponsored by Fuel Fuel Up, so, you know, it's great that they're giving the food away. I like the thing that you said there about Total Warrior being able to like you can go and choose because they have five or six food stands there. You know, depending on what you fancy, you can go to them and use a voucher there. I like that idea. Well, that's what they did when I was last there. Um, I wasn't there last year because it clashed with something else. Um, but yeah, but then Total Warrior used to do like three events, and they're now only doing one. So they used to be was it Total Warrior Shap. Leeds, and there was somewhere else, and I can't for the life of me remember where. The other one never went ahead, but there was going to be another one, but it never actually uh, materialised. And I think there was going to go down south somewhere, weren't there? So, but it never. What the famous know, south southern grounds, Pippingfords? Yeah, I, I don't know where it was down south. It might have been Pippingford, but it never, it never materialised. And then the land at Sharp sort of became non-viable non-viable in terms of they couldn't get hold of the land at Sharp, so they just now stick to Bramham Park, which is... It's and, a nice ground and everything. Yeah. But you don't get the hills that you've got when you're at Sharp. You know, I, I, there is only, there's only one OCR, I think, in the Lake District now, which is Race the Tide, and that's right up at Muncaster, and that's a that's a fair distance to go up in the Lake District. It's a pity, isn't it, because they've got such it beautiful... beautiful country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I did race the Tide last year, which I thought was really, really good fun, really a good fun race and, and quite enjoyable. And lots of um, fancy dress rock took, which was was really, really good. And and that, it was one of them good fun races. I'm not convinced that it's going to attract people from outside the Lake District, um, you know, because it's... I've never heard of it, dude. No, it's good. It's good fun. I went up with um, Stephen, and he's going to kill me if I forget his name now. Um, the ninja guy <laughs> um, does the boom nutrition. Steve, oh, I'm going to get my phone. He's going to shout at me now if I forget his name. Fell. Stephen Fell. How could I get that? We're up in the Fell, Stephen Fell. <laughs> How could I forget that? Um, yeah, I went up with Stephen Fell. He invited me up and we had a good time up there. Um, did a bit of running and a bit of walking and that. And um, it was good fun. But yeah, it's a long way. It's a very long way. Yeah, but then... Most of them are, are a long way for, well, you look at the ones in Scotland, if they want to come down south, there's nothing between Scotland, really, and well, it's going to be Manchester, isn't it? Yeah, Scotland and Manchester. We've got total, yeah. Born total Survivor. Warrior, Bramham, that's Leeds. Yeah, Born Survivor. Born Survivor is, there's two venues, isn't there? There's one in Cheshire and one in... Isn't, oh, 
one north of Manchester, one's south, one's north of Manchester, isn't it? Yeah, but it's still Manchester, really, isn't it? There's nothing yeah. really. So you're looking at like Mad uh, March Mayor. Uh, We've got Mad March Mayor in um, Northumberland, Hexham. See, where are all these? I've never heard of half these. <laughs> so you don't go, you don't know some of the ones that I go to. What's the other ones that are there? Um, Kel Celtic Warrior? You must have heard of Celtic Warrior. Nope, I've heard of Gelt. Oh, sorry, Gelt Warrior, yeah. Gelt, Gelt, sorry, Gelt Warrior, yeah. Um, what about Adrenaline Rush? That was based on the, uh, is it the Krypton Factor? Yeah, Krypton Factor. See, I'm giving, you, I'm giving you a list of ones that you haven't volunteered at here, aren't I? That's what I'm doing. I'm giving you a whole list of ones you haven't volunteered at. <laughs> Talk yeah, about you distance, watch, then. Go on, they'll sorry. be on the same dates as most of the other events that I go to. <laughs> Yeah, you're quite right. They will be. They will be. Uh, I know you've been to Belgium to volunteer because we talked about this the one we talked yep. about earlier at the FISO World Championships. Um, is that the furthest you've ever been to volunteer? Is Hungary further? Yeah. Oh, I don't... So I did Hungary as well for the European Championships. Right. Um, they put us up in. See that one? They better plan. So they literally put you up in the sports village. Right. And yes, it was a communist block building and literally like you go in and it's a bed and a bathroom. That's it. Um, they Premier provided... In. Huh? Premier in. It's a bed and a bathroom. They provided uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner at no extra cost. So that was good. Um, I was going to volunteer at Spartan Trifecta World Championships and the less we talk about that, the better. Right. <laughs> There's a story now. You know I'm going to say, no, we're not going to, we are going to talk about that now. Uh, I went out there with uh, Sue Savage, Chris Nuttall, and Jeff Turkin. Oh, crap, I'm going to get shot now for his surname. But literally, we, so we had our races booked, going to volunteer. So we got there, said we'd do the kids race, got the email to show up at 10 o'clock. So we went there, just checking, you know, we're running at two. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Just needed to wait outside while we get everyone out on the course. Yeah, okay. So we go outside and we're cheering the kids as they come running past. And then his car comes on and drives onto the course while there are still kids running. Oh, no. They then start shuttling volunteers out to the car in front of the kids that are running. So we then stand there going, it's an obstacle. Climb over the car. <laughs> you wasn't. They didn't. Yeah, we did. They didn't, but we told them to. And then we, so we got one of the uh, staff members turned around and said, wait. And we sat there for about five minutes afterwards, stewing about the fact. And then we just went in and gave them back the T-shirts and said, no, sorry. If that's what you're going to do for the juniors, I don't want to be out on the course. Right. Uh, so we didn't volunteer for that. Um, when I went back the a year after, they'd moved the volunteer tent. So it was nowhere near the course. <laughs> but yeah it blew my mind that they would allow a car onto the course while i could understand if adults were running because but kids won't think of it they'll literally just charge down and if the car comes they'll be like oh but yeah so yeah that blew me and then this year the furthest i think i'm going is going to be mammoth lakes in the u.s for the ocr world champions oh wow you're going you're going to the big distance well, I'm not doing Spartan Trifecta this year because I've got my 10 times. So the next time it's going to be worth me doing is when I do 25 times. I don't right. need to go every year to get another T-shirt that says Trifecta Tribe or whatever. So I'll go to the US this year. And then next year, I'll probably think about doing World's Toughest. Oh, the the, the Tough Mudder. The World's Tough yep. Mudder. That's excellent, yeah. So... You, when you go over to the World Championships, then over in Mammoth, that's that's to volunteer or to or to run or to do both. Uh, both. So right. I'll volunteer as much as I can the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to yeah. then run either the team race or the charity race on Sunday. Okay, that sounds good. That that's, that sounds yeah. pretty good. I like that. It'd be an experience. Yeah, yeah. So now now you're also. Um, you're with British Obstacle Sports. You've you've done the, you know, their test to become a. My, my words are losing me today. My words are losing me. I'm a level three 
national te- technical official. In- that's it. International technical official. Um, but that's as high as I'm going to want to go because um, if I go higher, they won't look at me to do obstacle volunteering. It'll be, it'll be more of looking after the referees, uh, making sure the volunteers are okay, checking that sort of stuff. And I don't, I miss being at an obstacle. I miss, I miss yeah. the banter you can have with people because yes, I'm a judge or I'm a technical official, but I can still have a laugh and a giggle. Whereas if I go up to uh, uh, chief technical official or acting chief technical official, I then got to look at it from well, actually no, that's an infringement of the rules and yeah. that can't happen, and that'll take me away from what I actually enjoy doing. Would that? Does that include paid roles, though? So if you're going to level four and you're going everywhere, no. does that not become a paid role at that point? No, it's still all voluntary. Right, OK. That's, um, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. If you do, you can get paid for it. So certain sports will pay you. So if I go back to High Rocks as a, an acting head judge rather than a volunteer judge, I'll get paid. Right. And expense rather than a salary, because obviously High Rocks is 15 hours. Yeah. And you're not allowed to work 15 hours. I don't care. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I get that too. I get that too. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, uh, but the, I know some of the TOs are saying about the fact that rather than get race codes, they'd much rather be paid because they can't use the race code because if they're teeing out, TOing, how are they going to be able to race? I get that. I get that. As As a... As a volunteer, what's the best obstacle you've ever volunteered on? 12-foot suffering wall. <laughs> because it was that hard for him to get over and you were laughing. There is a video of um, me and one other guy at the 12-foot wall and we're literally helping people over and this woman falls back and I catch her literally hands above my head, catch her and then she gets up and over the wall and finishes and the only thing she remembers about the fact is she managed to complete the wall because the volunteer at the bottom caught her. Oh wow, wow! So um, that's my that's my favourite. It it was the one they brought to uh, Mud Seven. But did so they put they, um, when, skull holes on that one? Yeah, skull head holes on it. It's the one that's now being sold by Raw because he's yeah. had to close. So the Suffering Wall moved down to Raw. He's now put it up for auction. Because he's got to close. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a shame that um, Rick's going to close because he's he's been it just as long as me and as long as you and um, if not longer, I think sometimes. And he's such a great character. I know he's not going to leave OCR, but he's you know he's he's got to think of his own mental health and his own and his family's health and do what's best for him. So um, shout out yeah. to him him down at Raw. Um, I said as a volunteer then, because my next one is going to be, as a runner, what's been your favourite obstacle? I'd have to say it was the multi-rig at Spartan, because I actually completed it. <laughs> because in the UK, it's so low that I'm I'm quite tall. Yeah. So you've then got to lift your legs up, whereas in Sparta, it was high enough that I could hang my legs and still swing through. So I actually managed to complete the rings, the bar, and then the rings at the end to ring the bell, which is the first time I've ever done it. Oh, so, wow. Wow. An achievement. An achievement. So, so, yeah, I'd have to say that one. Rigs are my nemesis because, obviously, I am tall. It's hard work trying to remember to lift your legs up so you can swing through. I, you know, I'm, I'm weird on this. I'm weird on this, mate, because I I, I go to Tough Mudders and I go to Spartan and you get on their, their rings and I, I could just walk underneath them and just touch the rings, you know, the... They're that low, and I get one of the reasons why they're low, but I I loved it when Spartan, not Spartan, when Tough Mudder did the rings over the airbag. For me, that was like, that was King brilliant. of the Swingers. Was... was it King of the Swingers or was that uh, Kong? I think it was Kong because King of the Swingers was when you um, when you leapt and you was quite high up. So that's like, it's now, is it? Um, it's not King of the Swingers. That little swinging one where you catch the thing. Um, I'm useless with names of them. It's not well, well swung. swung, so it's now called well swung. But the yeah. king of the swingers, which was really high, so it was that. But it was it was five foot off the floor, or ten foot off the floor, or however yeah. big it was. And that was the same with Kong, where you went and you went. There were rings, but there was an airbag below you. So 
you if you fell off, you were on the airbag, but you were high up, and it gave a whole new dimension to it than just being right near the ground. I, you know, yeah, it felt a bit like gladiators, gladiators back, and on that swing thing they have, it felt yeah, a no, bit like that. That's high off the ground, whereas yeah. you go to most places and the rigs are like, yeah, I'm just short six feet. I can walk through this yeah, <laughs> with my hands swinging on the things. And they're like, well, you can't do that. It's like, well, then make it higher. Oh, but we have to make it accessible for everybody. Well, then stagger it because is it the elements, elements rigs were three tiered. Right. You had an easy section, a middle section, and then a hard section. And they basically were went up high, off the ground higher each time. Wow. Wow. I like, did, Nuts did one similar to that this year, didn't they? They went low rig to mid rig to high rig um, and different. Or was it the other way around? I can't remember which way it was. Um, yeah. This year, last year, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been to Nuts for a bit. Yeah. So, and Wayne, thank you for joining me. I'm I'm not going to, I know you're a busy man. I, uh, I'm i a busy man. We're, we're really busy on this, this night. Um, thank you for joining me. Before I let you go, do you want to give a shout out to anyone or um any mentions? We, we tried to mention some names and we've got them all butchered so far. So let's butcher a few more if you want. Well, let's see. There's you, there's Ian, there's Katie and Libby. I'm going to kill them for recommending that you give me chats on this podcast. <laughs> um, and then there's anybody that voted for me or nominated me for volunteer of the year again. This could be third year, third time lucky. Uh, no, this will be second time lucky, dude. I didn't win last year. No, Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay Ewan won, didn't she? Lindsay Ewan. Oh, yes. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it could be revenge. <laughs> could go one way or another. Because Lindsay's at a lot of races. You, you must see a lot of Lindsay because you do go to a lot of races together, don't you? Lindsay does more of the high races. So I sit there. And yeah. then, obviously, if I go to the Scottish races, she's there. And I know she does come down south Yeah. for, um, I think it's Spartan she'll come down for. I'm not sure about Tough Mudder. Um but then, like I said, I have trouble remembering what I did last week, so I have trouble remembering who I've seen this year and who I haven't. <laughs> uh, well, Wayne, Wayne, Grumpy King, thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome, dude. All right.